This is a brief tutorial on how to use the University of Colorado's um, simulations and this is the gas properties simulation. So when you go onto their website you want to look for the simulation called gas properties under the, all the chemistry simulations. So you have a worksheet that goes with this and I'm not going to be showing the worksheet on this tutorial so make sure that you have it in front of you. But this is just a brief tour of how this simulation will work. And if you look at your directions on your worksheet, under Roman numeral 1, you want to make a graph of pressure versus volume, pressure on the y-axis, volume on the x-axis. We want to look at the, the relationship between pressure and volume here. Well, when we look over here at the top right-hand corner, under constant parameters, if we're going to be working with volume and pressure, then your other parameter, which is temperature, is going to remain constant. Okay, so if we have, well, there's the bell. If we have two parameters here, okay, that we're working with, then the third parameter is going to remain constant. Only when you're working with all three parameters will you have no constant, and that's not going to um, apply for this particular activity that we're going to be doing. Okay. The other thing we can look at is how do we add gas? Well, you pump the handle. And for this tutorial, it works best really for two good handle pumps of your heavy species of gas is um, great for what we want to do. You'll notice that temperature is given here in Kelvin. Remember, we always use Kelvin when working with gases because it is directly proportional to average kinetic energy, which is defined by the motion of our gas particles here. So make sure um, that you review all the properties of gases from chapter 13, section 1. Okay. How do we control pressure and volume? Well, volume is going to be on the x-axis of our graph. So that means it's our independent variable. That means that's a variable that we control. And pressure is on the y-axis. That's our dependent variable. So we are controlling volume to see what happens to pressure. We control volume by putting our cursor over here and grabbing the handle. And notice the little guy will walk. And we can change the volume. And you can see how the pressure will change. Okay. Notice that it, it will it has a peak and then the pressure will settle down a little bit. So this tutorial is really based on real conditions. This is actually what would happen. So when you want to take a measurement, because you're going to be doing that, what you can do is hit the pause button and it will freeze things here and then you can look at your pressure, okay, 1.40 atmospheres and your temperature whenever you need to use your temperature here in Kelvin. Now what about our volume because we're going to be using volume here? Well, let's get this running again. If we go over to Tools and Options, we have a measurement tool. And the best one that works is the ruler. It's not perfect, OK? Um, what it does is we can use it to measure the width of our container. And this is in nanometers, so you can just drag it. So zero, 0 is over here at the one end of the container and we would see that this is about 4.1 nanometers in width here. There's also a layer tool and this will give us our pressure if we slide this up and down at any place, any level in the container. So notice that the atmospheric pressure is 1.38 here, down here it's 1.43, down to 1.3. There's a little bit of variability and then it gives you the full height of the container okay from you know 0.1 nanometers all the way up to I don't know 5.3 nanometers but really the height in this pressure is not really going to be applicable to what we're doing we're really interested in the overall pressure and some sort of volume measurement so we can get rid of that layer tool if we want and I know that this is only a width, but it is proportional to volume. Okay, So as we change our volume here, the width is going to change. 
So it is proportional. So when you're recording your volume measurements, you can use this ruler and just to make a recording of the value here of this width because we know it's proportional to volume and that's going to be good enough. And we can measure our pressure here and there is going to be some variation. So like I said, if it bothers you that this pressure is changing a little bit, you can hit the pause button and read what you're reading there. So you're going to be taking some measurements. We're going to go over here and I have an x-axis and a y-axis and notice my gas properties is gone below as soon as I activate this page. My little website dives underneath there. But my volume, x is going to be volume, y is going to be pressure, and my pressure is measured in atmospheres. My volume here, since I'm just using this width measurement as sort of a proportionality to volume. The units are not going to worry that much. So if I consider this my first measurement here, my so-called volume, or what's proportional to volume, is about 6.15. So put 6.15 for volume, for my pressure, 0.96 atmospheres. OK, then I can go back. And I want to run this again, and I'm going to change my volume again. All right. So I'll slide the ruler over so I can read it. Now I have 5.1 <clears throat> for my volume, and my pressure is about, I'll pause it, 1.22. So over here, 5.1 for my volume, my pressure is 1.22. And I can go back and take another measurement. I hit play, and I can decrease the volume more. And if I choose, I could you know, decrease it by a certain number of units here if you want to be consistent. Okay, if you want to say, oh, I want to decrease my volume by three nanometers each time, you can do that. So I've decreased it now, I'm at 4.25. Okay, we had a little problem there with my sketchbook and I can't fix it, so I'm not going to be writing. But if this was 4.25 here, then I could see that my pressure, that would record my pressure as my y value of 1.32. And then I could go do this again. I could decrease my volume even more, make sure I move the ruler to get a good measurement, and let's say 3.25 for my volume and my pressure would be 1.69. So I would want to record about 10x y values. Obviously, the more data points you have, the more accurate um, you're going to be in terms of determining what the actual relationship is between those two parameters. Okay. So the next one we're doing is volume and temperature. And since we have to measure volume, you're going to need your ruler out again. And since we're at volume and temperature are the parameters we're working with and will change, pressure then is our constant parameter. So remember, you need to click that. Now, in order to change temperature, temperature is on our x-axis, so that's our independent variable. That's the one where we are controlling. We use the little heat control here. Okay, so first of all, I need to add some gas. Let's get this playing. And let me add two pumps of gas there. Okay, and this guy, notice he's moving, going to be moving around a little bit. The volume is changing a bit here to equilibrate the pressure, to keep the pressure constant, because we checked pressure as being our constant variable. Um, so I'll move my ruler here. Now I'm going to add some heat. Notice what's happening to my volume and my corresponding temperature. I can hit pause. Obviously, since I hit pause, I can't move my ruler. Let's go back. And then I can measure this width here as sort of a measure of the volume, 9 point, let's see, 9.15 um, maybe, and my corresponding temperature would be 721. Okay. Um, then if I wanted to add even more heat, my temperature went up, my volume really didn't increase that much. Okay, I could make a measure, another measurement if I want, or then I could remove heat.
So I'm going to remove heat. Now as I do that, notice what's happening to my pressure. So then I can make another measurement and my corresponding, I can make another corresponding temperature measurement here. Here we go. So I need to get him out of the way so I can read my temperature. And notice we know we are equilibrating the volume, so this guy's going to keep moving. So this is going to be a, a trickier one to measure because this guy is going to be move, moving back and forth. He's controlling this um, volume and, try, and trying to equilibrate the pressure. So it's going to be harder to get your volume measurements when you do this. This one's a little bit trickier, but again, you're controlling your heat here with this heat control. Okay, and then you can hit pause. And you know, if it's too much of a pain to keep hitting play and moving the ruler, you can kind of just read off wherever your ruler is setting to get a volume measurement. Okay, so that is your volume temperature relationship. Remember, temperature is on the x axis, you're controlling temperature, you're seeing what happens to the resulting volume. The next one would be temperature and pressure. So this time, since we're working with temperature and pressure, volume would be our constant parameter. Okay, and to work with um, temperature and pressure, again, temperature is on the x-axis, so you're going to be controlling that via your heat control. And you're seeing what's happening to the resulting pressure here using this pressure scale. In room number four, you're working with number of particles as your x-axis and volume as your y-axis. Okay, so number of particles and volume. So our constant parameter, this is going to be tricky. I don't think we can check, click two. So I think we're going to put none. I would put none for that. So a couple of things are going to change here. But in order to change number of particles, you change that simply by what you're pumping in. So here's your number of particles here. Make sure you have just one type of species, well, um, whether it's either heavy or light. We don't mix the type of species for this particular exercise. So your number of particles is here on your x-axis. The resulting volume is going to be here. You're going to measure that with your ruler. And then you can pump in more particles, measure your number of species, and see the resulting change in volume. So that's Roman numeral four. So that's just a brief overview of how to use this gas properties tutorial to determine some relationships between parameters in gases and how they behave.